Hi, everyone. Um, this is the second live. Really excited to be able to do this. Um, I think the first one went well, so I'm happy to continue doing this. Um, right, so today I want to talk about how I got started on this path. And really, I want to talk about what sparked my interest for investing and financial independence, because I wasn't born with this and I never learned this at school or at university. And so it's something that came to me at some point. Um, and the reason I, was, I want to talk about this is because for most people, this never happens. <laughs> and I've been very lucky to basically be um, invited in this world because of things that happened to me. Um, and to be honest, it wasn't the best way to start, right? So for me, it started because I had three major issues. Um, so as some of you may know, I used to work in the UAE, so abroad outside of Belgium. And um, after a while, I was broke <laughs> because uh, I lost my job. I ran out of money and I had to borrow money from my brother, my little brother. Um, so that was a very humbling experience and I was broke. And so... Um, that was one major issue that got me started. I was broke. I had no choice but to get started, basically. <laughs> start thinking about personal finances and start tracking my, my, my money. The second big problem I had is that I had no pension. So once I got out of being broke, right, I started saving and I started putting money aside. I realized I was abroad and I didn't have a pension. And if I was going to stay abroad, that would, you know, that would be a problem for retirement. So I started doing some research on pensions um, and the, the, like everywhere I would go, I was always referred to this uh, one way that most expats are saving for retirement, uh, which are the savings plan um, that are being sold by uh, insurance brokers, uh, financial advisors and banks. Um, and so that is the third major issue I run into because I signed up for one of those plans and they turned out to be horrible for the investor and the saver. Um, they have super high fees. Um, they're really poorly managed. Diversification is, is really bad. They tend to put all of your investment into the latest stocks that were going up in the past five years. So you didn't have a really good diversification. There was a lot of problem with this. And this is an ongoing problem across the whole Middle East. And we have a lot of expats. Um, there are a lot of expats who basically signed up for those. And the reason I signed up for those is because that's what everyone was telling me to go for. HR, banks, financial advisors, uh, colleagues, everybody was doing this thing. And it's only because I got interested in the topic of uh, investing and, and planning for my retirement that I realized how bad that was. So basically, when I, when, when, where I want to go to is uh, my story basically starts because I made mistakes in the sense that I got broke. Um, I had no pension. It's not really a mistake, but it was a tough situation. And uh, and I signed up for this horrible plan that uh, ended up being very costly to me. And we'll talk about this some other time. Um, but basically, I started thinking about investment and I stumbled upon financial independence, mostly because I had no choice. So something happened to me and I had no choice but to work on it, to solve it for myself and to be able to move forward in my life, right? So I had no choice but to start learning. So I grabbed everything I could find. So obviously I started on the internet. I went to websites and blogs. Um, I got books on the topic. I took online courses on the topic um, and anything related to pension planning, investment, etc. because I had no idea where to go. I didn't know that I could just Google financial independence and I would get a, a gold mine of information. Uh, today, that's what you do, right? If you want to find the right information, you type financial independence. If you want to find the wrong information, you type investing or, or trading or something like that. And then you have all sorts of, you know, not always very useful information. So I learned about general, finan general investing on Wikipedia, on, sorry, on Investopedia. I learned about general finance uh, through university courses that I took online. So in this case, University of Michigan for me. And then finally, I came across websites and blogs such as JL Collins, who explains how to invest in a very simple way in index CTF and why it is so powerful and why it is the most effective way of doing so. Um, and also Mr. Money Mustache, who basically you know, triggered this massive um, interest in the movement of financial independence and is sort of one of the, the, the leading figures in the space. 
Um, and I found out about the podcast of Mad Scientist and I started listening to everything he had. And that's how I came across as well the Bogleheads community, right? The Bogleheads community is essentially a group of investors who come together, who have come together and decided that they could develop a set of principles and guiding principles that could benefit the investors instead of benefiting the financial industry. So the Bogleheads were a huge lifesaver for me. I learned so much from 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 that group that community both on the wikipedia with both on their wiki page and on the forum where i was asking my questions um now i've listed a bunch of resources here that helped me a lot i will for sure list them in the description uh, of this video um so you'll be able to find it and hopefully use it as well <laughs> uh, i mentioned jim jail collins um He's a good friend today. We've, you know, we met a couple of times and uh, we'll, we'll have him on the Fire Belgium show later. Um, but so I was learning all this and unfortunately most of that was still not relevant to my situation because a lot of that was uh, tailored to the US uh, and to the situation there. So I still had to figure out how to actually do it myself um, uh, and understand that you know it wasn't mutual funds, it was index ETFs, which basically were a way for me to access mutual funds or um, index funds, but um, in a way that's a bit different from the US. And then I had to figure out a bunch of things such as currency and uh, taxes, etc. And so there was still a lot more learning to do, uh, but I managed uh, with the resources that were available. And it took a long time, but finally I got my own investment going, right? Um, and once I had my own plans in place, and once I realized how bad all of these savings plans were for expats, that's when I started showing people how to do this as well right it's um it turns out it's actually very simple uh, it doesn't take like it takes a bit of learning up front right and that can be a bit confusing because it seems like it's a huge mountain but really it isn't uh, it's far simpler than what the industry wants you to believe and you can learn in just a few weeks or a few months and then it takes just you know 15 20 minutes a month maximum to manage uh, and it's basically brings me peace of mind and trust in my system confidence trust in the future anyway lots of benefits which we've talked about already before um but where i'm where i'm gonna where i want to go with this is um i wanted to highlight the fact that for me this didn't start from an intentional decision it was triggered by an external event right but by circumstances in which i got myself into because of lack of awareness lack of education um and i was wondering if i'm the only one or if that's the case for you too so um, first of all, have you, if you're watching this, have you started taking control of your finances? Are you moving forward in terms of learning how to invest in a simple and effective way? Are you moving forward in terms of working on your financial independence? And if you are, I would love to hear from you what started this, what sparked your interest in investing, in taking control of your finances and in financial independence. Um, I want to know this because I think there's a massive lack of awareness, which is obviously the reason why I'm doing those, those live videos now. And that needs to be changed. Um, this, this sort of simple knowledge should be part of the normal curriculum, right? It is so life-changing. The benefits are so incredible on, on my personal life, but also on what I'm able to do to make things better around me. Um, that it's just, like, I feel it's unfair that, you know, that I got into this because because of an external thing, because I got into trouble, because I was unaware of how this works and I was forced to learn. It's unfair because it's so simple <laughs> and someone should have just told me earlier um, that I could just free, free my time in this way, right? And so I'm interested to know how that went for you. Like, is this something that you got into because you sort of, something happened to you that you had to take control and start Googling? And maybe researching on the topic? Um, maybe just that's, you know, that's enough sometimes, or is it, that you have always been trying to make your finances better and and you were shown the way and if that's the case and i would love to hear that too because that means there is some level of reach that the community has and there is some level of you know awareness raising and education and um, which i think we need to all work on together because it's it's really important so there you go that's that's what i have to share for today um i have a lot more coming because uh there's at least 30 days of this, uh, these videos that will be coming in total and maybe more, we'll see how it goes. But uh, please let me know what you think of this idea of sharing you know, thoughts on this stuff uh, on a daily basis. And yeah, and let me know how, you know, what sparked your interest in investing in financial independence. I'd love to hear that. Right, that's all for today.
cheers and um, we'll speak some other time